finished the lecture on tyranny as seen in Plato's Theges and uh, Xenophon's Hero. The painting behind me is one that I call Sappho, and in it you can see a brief quotation of one of her poems. Um, I think that a line, a uh, verse from her poem that's more telling. I use George Anastopolo's book, um, The Thinker as Artist, which I highly recommend. And Sappho says, there are those who say an array of horsemen, and others of marching men, and others of ships, is the most beautiful thing on the dark earth. But I say it is whatever one loves. Now, I believe that this is the marching theme uh, of the lyric poets of the 6th century. What they were espousing was individual liberty over that and above uh, a group uh, community mentality. And this is very dangerous. Um, community, a sense of community is necessary to accomplish anything. Individuals tend to uh, disrupt and Sappho's a prime example. Uh, she was exiled from her homeland. Uh, also, uh, uh, after her, her home, her city, became known for its uh, decadence and corruption. Probably a direct result of her uh, teachings. Now, um, one of the things that rises up in this idea of individuality are, are those individuals who wish to rule. Theseus is a prime example in Plato, uh, the young man who wants to be tyrant. He's been provided a, a very good education, as Socrates questioned him if he has had the proper education that uh, the sons of gentlemen receive. Now, the sons of gentlemen were seen to take, when they grew up, they were going to take over the um, political positions that were necessary for running the city. Therefore, they had to have a more liberal education, one that liberates them from the system. They could stand outside, take a look at it, and examine the problems that would arise. The trouble with living, being able to stand outside, liberty um, is not something one easily relinquishes. And witness the um, the individual in the cave in Plato's Republic who goes up into the light and basically has to be coaxed back down into the cave. Uh, now, Z Xenophon was different than Plato in that Plato w was an aristocrat, uh, educated, well-traveled. Xenophon, as I have said, was a Spartan mercenary. He was a man of action. And as such, he, he was still obviously very intelligent. He could read Plato and understand what Plato was getting at, which is a rarity even today. But Xenophon did understand him, and he took the message or the theory that Plato was espousing, and he put it into action. And that's the great piece of, of the work, the hero, and the, what, what it does. Now, in the hero, Xenophon it starts off with a, um, a poet called Simonides. And Simonides encounters uh, the tyrant hero. and when they have both found leisure, it says, which is important because that ties it in with Plato's Theges, which began with the idea of leisure. The leisure is an interesting concept in that each of the two characters in, in the hero, Simonides and Hero, both require leisure to do what they do. The poet needs leisure in order to create. The tyrant needs leisure in order to appreciate the life of the body, the pleasure, one a positive, one a negative. Now once they have a found leisure, Simonides questions Hero, what, how do you compare 
the life of a tyrant with that of the common man. Um, an interesting thing he does, um, in Xenophon's book, The Education of Cyrus, he talks about a battle plan. And one of the things you must do, he says, you must take the enemy and draw him to corrupt ground. And then when he is confused, set upon him. Now, I believe this is the format of the work he has written called The Hero. What he's going to do is he's going to draw the tyrant, Hero, to a corrupt ground. And that is, he begins by asking him about the body's senses. If I can take him to the body and have him try to explain that as a way of life, it's easily defeated because the, the pleasures of the body are just not arguable as being the good life. Now, so Simonides begins, and it should be noted that um, Hero has referred to Simonides as a wise man. Now, um, Simonides begins his question, is that he lists five senses and ask Hero to talk about each of them. And he starts with the the eyes, seeing, the ears, hearing, the nose, smelling, the mouth, tasting, and the sex organ. Now, notice that the central one is the nose. As, as with Plato, um, Xenophon has learned his style, and therefore the central one is the important one. Now, an example, what Hero does is he begins demeaning each of them. It, it, in, in, contrast with his life. He says that they're all negative. That uh, seeing, uh, a great thing could be occurring in a foreign city and the common man can go and see it. But the tyrant can't. The tyrant can't leave his city. He, if he goes to another city, he risks being killed or someone at home taking his power. 